Hello, welcome, welcome. It is time to talk about singing. <laughs> it is Wednesday. It is 5.04 p.m., so I'm a few minutes late, but that was just because I was having lighting issues. I'm gonna give some time to some people to come in and then we're gonna get going and we're gonna follow up on what we discussed last week. And then we are going to jump into what we are going to be discussing uh, this week. Hold on, I'm adjusting. So last week we discussed managing expectations. Like I said, I'm basically going to be carrying these topics week to week as we go and trying to make that very specific for you so that you can actually get something out of it. When I'm not actually working one-on-one -on -one with a student, watching someone sing and analyzing someone else's singing, the best way that I can teach you anything about singing is just to break down the certain topics that I do talk about with my students in lessons, just so it makes sense to you. Eventually we will get more into actual singing, but I'm going to explain a lot of stuff like I said. What we're going to talk about today is this idea of your behavior and how it affects your voice. Last week we talked about expectations. We talked about your expectations jumping into lessons or studying voice in general or just singing at home by yourself. When you're hard on yourself, why are you hard on yourself? Is it because you sort of think it's gonna be easier or you know, what is it? What is it that, that's making it tough? So what we talked about was getting real. Let's get real. Let's get real with where we're at so that we're not let down or feeling frustrated by the process. I have a lot of students who get so frustrated in the process and I'm always reminding them, but it takes time, right? So that's a huge part of it. It takes time. You have to have patience. And then we also talked about setting goals that feel realistic or setting goals that we can really see ourselves achieving as opposed to just, I wanna be a good singer. That's very vague. <laughs> what do you actually want singing to be in your life? How do you wanna use it in your life? I think that's more important and I think it helps us to gauge what we're going after. Today, in talking about behavior, that means so many things to me. I talk about behavior so often in my lessons and it's because my teachers have talked to me about behavior. When I started studying with my second teacher, Mary Jo, she is so brilliant. When I started studying with Mary Jo, we talked so much about behavior and we talked so much about this idea that everything we do affects our voice, just like any other person doing any other sport. You can be somebody who plays basketball and if you do certain things with your body, it's gonna affect your ability to play basketball. Drinking, <laughs> a huge thing for singers. You have to really pay attention to what you put into your body and how it affects your body. So we're gonna get into all that today. And really, I believe that varies person to person. Something that might affect you may not affect me the same way. I am somebody who, for those of you that don't know, when I was out on the road with 6 a.m., I slept a lot and I never really drank, ever. So I was not with DJ. I don't party when I have to sing now. Now I will say that when I was younger, your girl had fun. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was in high school and after high school doing musicals, it was like I was so young and my body was so resilient that it felt easier to just do whatever I wanted. And then you age and you realize like, oh shoot, my body ain't jumping back from that as much. You have to know yourself. You have to know what certain things do to your body and to your chemistry and to your ability to do your job or to sing if you have money on the line and if you're just going to karaoke booze is probably part of it you know what I mean in general behavior affects voice sleep that's a huge one I always talk to singers about this idea that if you have something coming up for example I'm going to New York this week technically next week I have to sing a certain song I have a certain requirement that is gonna be on me to perform I need to be ready for that how I take care of myself this week and how I prepare to go do that specific type of singing it might be a little different than if you're out on the rock tour I know a lot of singers on Broadway and people that do shows like that where they're having to do the same show every week they have certain rituals to how they take care of themselves because they know their behavior and they know how their behavior is going to affect how they sing. They work out pre-show. I know a lot of people who do that. Before they go to the theater, they go do a quick 30 minute workout just to really get their body moving. It's just knowing your body. So it's being mindful of your use of your voice also. I remember hearing a singer, a classical vocalist, Renee Fleming, I heard her speak. She was saying that she almost looks at singing like you only get so many chances to do it. So you really have to be very aware of that gift of being able to use your voice and so treat it like a piggy bank almost. Treat it like your bank account. How much do you spend of this thing that you have? You only have so many chances to hit a high C. Don't just hit them all and like, don't just frivolously throw away your energy and your power. It's this idea that we really want to not be too precious about it, but we also want to protect this thing that we're using. Speaking is also a huge part of that. When I got a little bit older, when I got into my adult years, I noticed that my speaking had gotten very teenage in high 
high school <laughs> and after graduating my voice had kind of like gotten this like I call it teenage talk whenever I deal with a teenager now I'm always talking about this how we use our speaking voice that's behavior if you're somebody like uh, 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 glottal stops that's that idea that you're uh, 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 kind of banging on the chords I like to take vocal jargon and just say it normally don't bang on your chords it's this idea of speaking with breath ha huh. hmm everybody who's watching right now sigh and if you take a nice sigh ha huh, you can feel natural breath natural connection to your voice and we're gonna talk about that more that's gonna be a later lesson but your behavior how you speak it's huge are you somebody who breathes and speaks on your breath and is it natural everybody talks about this concept of vocal fry which was made really famous famous by the Kardashians. They're like, yeah, and so, like, anyway, like, everything sort of comes down, and that's a vocal fry. It's sort of frying the ends of your words, grating your chords at the ends of your words. Pay attention to how you speak. If you're somebody that loses your voice a lot, there's probably a reason for that. There could be allergies, there could be other things, but there's probably a reason why that happens. We just always want to be very aware of what's happening when we speak, so that we're not speaking in a way that is just detrimental to our chords. It's about being graceful about those things. In general, self-awareness about your behavior. Know yourself, know what works and know what doesn't work. Melissa cannot go drinking at a bar, being loud, talking over people, screaming if she's got to sing. <laughs> I know that about myself. I'm not 18 anymore. I never drank at 18, by the way. My mom is somewhere just like shaking her head. <laughs> Point being, you've just gotta know how you react. I have friends that party, man, and it don't bug them. For some reason, it's not something that's bugging them in the sense that they can't do their work. So again, it's knowing yourself. With that, there needs to be compromise. If you wanna take singing seriously, you also have to understand that there's compromise involved in that. Sometimes I wanna go hang out with friends, but I sort of realize I also really wanna do well tomorrow when I have to sing. It's just kind of getting into this place where you really treasure that ability to do that more than you treasure just having fun. So it's the hard work aspect over the kind of more chill part of singing, which is that we also do it when we're just having fun. We sing in the car with our friends, we go to karaoke, we do certain things like that, and they're just enjoyable ways of using our voice. I'm talking more specifically about misuse, when we take it too far and then our voice is gone for the next four days. You have to be mindful of what works and really pay attention to your body. Singing is physical. It's a physical act. It's one of those things, it's like, if you actually pay attention to your behavior and how your voice does the next day, you can probably figure out why it wasn't working before or what made it not work today. You can kind of go back to your behavior and go, well, last night when I was at dinner, I noticed that I was kind of speaking like, eh, getting really tough on my voice. You're just paying attention to where you are and how you're using it at certain times. I also think it's a bad habit situation too. If you're somebody that talks really loud, that's kind of a habit. Sometimes. We we just talk loud because we don't realize we're talking loud. So sometimes we use our voice way too much and we don't even realize, oh shoot, I'm really pushing right now. Uh, so many singers, they deal with these issues and they don't know where it's coming from and I get it because I've been there. I've had a teacher looking at me too going, hey, you need to pay attention to why this is happening. I had a lot of issues come up with my voice and I think a lot of it was, was paying attention to behavior. I eventually got diagnosed with asthma when I really looked at my behavior and I realized that every time I exercise Exercised, I was coughing a lot and I was getting thick vocal cords and then all of a sudden my voice would be gone for two days almost laryngitis induced from this coughing that would happen and then finally when I got an inhaler for asthma a lot of that seemed to go away it actually did come down to paying attention to behavior it came down to paying attention to when my voice would react a certain way and I think that that is something that you can reflect on yourself you can actually figure out when your voice is not doing well another thing is eating late at night people don't realize sometimes that they deal with GERD or acid reflux issues and so they'll eat a meal at 11 o'clock at night. I have a singer that I work with and he plays pretty regularly with a band and I mentioned that to him and his face sort of sunk. <laughs> sunk a little bit. He seemed so sad and I was like, why are you bummed? And he goes, oh, I definitely ate pizza after my show at, at two last night and then went right to bed. So if you're waking up and you're clearing your throat and you don't really know why you're doing that, but you may not realize that it actually has to do with your behavior because the night before you were up late and you, you ate something that was really heavy and so that sat in your stomach. These are kind of like habits and things we have to pay attention to so we realize there are things that are affecting this muscle. And I think that goes for a lot of different things. You know, I think that when you have 
have something required of you, whether it's at your job or whether it's singing or whether you're an athlete or something like that, in general, you start paying attention to how to really protect that. You start really paying attention and especially when there's money on the line. For professional singers, it's also about being a pro. Being a pro, man. Are you a pro? Or are you somebody that kind of, you know you're supposed to be serious about it, but like there's this party on Friday. And that's the thing, is it's compromise. I can guarantee you that there are a lot of people in New York City doing Broadway shows right now that just know that after show they don't talk. It's just a given. They just know. After show, I don't talk. I rest my voice after show. When they've got a five show weekend, they are not just like all out, like for all hours acting crazy because again, there's a paying audience coming the next day. It's the same thing for bands on tour. You realize if you can't go on stage and do your job, it costs money. You know what I mean? When we were on the road with 6 a.m., James never frivolously did anything because his voice needed to be functioning every single day. And those songs are effing hard to sing. If you don't know who James is, I'm talking about lead singer of 6 a.m., the band I toured with. His voice had to go so high and had to do so much. So he really had to manage his ability to kind of deliver that each night. And so it meant sleeping a certain amount and drinking a certain amount of water and steaming, getting into physical routines that you know are gonna make you the best. This also comes down to your workout and how you vocalize and how you use your voice and how actively you use your voice. I'm gonna kind of tie this all back to something I have going on this week. And like I said, I am gonna try to sing a little something at the end of each lesson. And I hope this makes sense, this concept of behavior and how your habits and your routines absolutely affect how your voice works. And I'm gonna bring this back to my own life. I'm going to New York next week. I'm singing a number from Chicago for this event. So if you guys know the musical Chicago, I'm gonna be singing a song called All That Jazz, which is very, very famous, right? I'm doing it for this event, this show. I don't sing musical theater all the time. I did when I was young. I'm not singing as much. I miss it though, and I love doing it. So I'm having to kind of change how I think a little bit and get back into musical theater mode. If you don't know, Chicago, I'm gonna sing you the first verse of this and this is what I've been working on this week. I'm gonna tell you specifically what I'm paying attention to. Chicago is written by Kander and Ebb. It's a very jazzy and very classical Broadway sort of show. We all know the movie. If you've seen the movie with Catherine Zeta-Jones, All That Jazz is a song that that character Velma Kelly sings in the show. I'm doing it out of context of the show. I want to get that classic sound. I want to find that nice warmth that those types of shows ask for, kind of a brass warm vocal meaning you know a lot of musical theater is very contemporary in terms of how we present it a lot of it is really bright it's a different style Chicago has that more classic Broadway big open belt it can be a big brassy belt and all that stuff more specifically for my voice I really like to find the warmth in my voice I don't like everything to sit pingy even though a lot of singers on Broadway would approach things that way so maybe a lot of singers would Come on, babe, hmm, this kind of bright sound. And I'm gonna kind of warm it up a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So the intro of the song has this dun 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 I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So I'm gonna show you what I mean, but I'm really gonna activate my diction. So I'm gonna use the words and I'm gonna try to drop every vowel. And here's what I mean, here we go. One, two. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car. I know a whoopee spot where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all that jazz. You see what I'm saying, guys? So that's what I'm working on this week. Really getting all of this space to open up without doing a bunch of extra work. So when I'm getting into that last note, I'm really asking for that J. J, J, and really letting my tongue relax, letting everything sort of open, letting the back of my throat 
space, right? I need space. This is not a rock show. There's parts of Chicago that feel very contemporary, but it's also a very jazzy, brassy, open, warm sound, and I can really use that. Again, we're gonna kind of break down a bunch of different things in these lessons. Today, I really wanted to talk about behavior because I think it's so important. And next week, I'm gonna move into talking about this idea of muscle memory. We get trained to use our voice a certain way. Like I just said, I'm focusing more on Broadway this week. I'm singing with that Broadway style there's notes that go a lot higher in that song. I have to like, yeah, like really get up high. I have to work on finding the right placement of certain notes and how I'm gonna get into them, what feels comfortable, what feels like it's really accessing the best parts of my own voice and my own strength. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there for today. Again, behavior and your voice. How does behavior affect your voice? If you don't sleep at all, you will be exhausted and then your muscles will get tired. These are muscles as well. If you stay up drinking till 3 a.m. and you sleep four hours and you wake up and have to sing it, I don't know, 9 a.m., you're probably gonna be exhausted and hung over and that's probably not gonna go well. You know what I'm saying? So again, your behavior affects your voice. Everything you do affects your voice. So you've gotta pay attention to how things affect your voice because we are all different humans. Thank you so much for watching. I really want to grow this. When I do these live, we have a small audience here right now and that is totally okay with me, but I would love for this to grow. So if you want to share with anybody that you think will get something out of this, again, we will get more and more into actual singing and I'll show you more things, but I want to cover all the bases first so that you understand what we're doing here. Okay guys, have a great night. I will chat with you soon. Bye.